So every person is in a process of becoming, the unfolding is unfolding. And a lot of times we are trying to solve the mystery of our own identity, of who we are. And when you think about this, we're also being bombarded with messages and programming that tells us that we need to give and do for everyone else and to serve. And we're on this hamster wheel of giving, giving, giving that leaves the vessel that the service pours from empty. So as we're holding this aspect of who am I, while also trying to give and give and give and do for others, we become so depleted. And you'll see this in population health metrics and with the medical crisis that is happening in our country in so many ways of, you know, stress-related illnesses that this concept, this, this message that we are supposed to be giving, giving, and doing, doing, doing has actually led us off of the path of alignment for our health and well-being. And I want to propose something that if we start to, instead of just worrying about everyone else and making everybody do whatever we think they should be doing or trying to do for everyone, and we started to reorient our awareness back to ourselves, to learn more about our nature, to tend to our, the parts of ourselves that are asking to be healed, in that we begin to revitalize the way we show up for others that we're showing up more in alignment to what is our nature, what we're good at, what we enjoy to do, that we are able to energize our relationships with presence and compassion because we've been offering that for ourselves, that we can contribute to the collective with more whole, wholesomeness, right? And more energy and joy because we're contributing in the way that is organic to our very nature. You know, this aspect is what fuels why Mel Marie does what Mel Marie does, our mission. And our mission is about creating a life you don't need to escape from. patterning your systems within, but it comes from a philosophy that I call embodied paradox. So this is where we hold two opposites. It's where you hold um, a yes and a no all at once. It's where you hold anger and pain with love and compassion. And we do this on the mat as well as doing it off the mat. So whether on the mat, it's through the challenging postures that you're like ready to collapse and get out of, but you're so using your breath and smiling and softening your muscles 
and you endure it for one more breath, you're training that neuroplasticity, you're training that embodied paradox. But likewise, off the mat, when we are met with experiences that frustrate us or someone we don't understand, that we can be at the edge of discomfort, breathing in the softness of compassion, breathing in the softness of that this now moment's gonna change to the next. We learn not to react to every single thing that, that falls upon our path, right? We learn to be more inquisitive and inquiry oriented, to think for ourselves and have a new awareness about the quality that we want in the now moment. And this is an aspect of a lot of remembering. You know, I say healing is a process of remembering who we are. It's a process of coming back to our own nature and, you know, amplifying the things that are organically in aligned for us. So the things that you love to do and also having compassion and working through the things that bring edge or challenge to you. And so embodied paradox to create a life you don't need to escape from, it's learning to work with your embodied paradox. It's learning to hold both the humanness in you. And this actually leads to a really fun story. So I've been uh, teaching, you know, I've been doing program, developing programs and facilitating yoga therapy since 2012. So back then, when I started this work, I wasn't really sure what to call my business. And I looked around and all the yoga studios and all the yoga businesses had names like, you know, Soothing Waters Yoga or Light and Love Wellness, right? Or just something very serene. So I couldn't come up with something that felt right for me. So out of convenience, I pulled the name from my Tumblr that I had in high school. And I just went with it, right? I was like, I'll figure this out as we go, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Well, in time, eventually, you know, I hadn't come up with a new name yet, but I LLC'd Mel Marie, then eventually trademarked Mel Marie, but always had this underlying discontent with it until about a few months ago, I was invited to look up the meaning of the name that I go by. And you know, most people kind of know the meaning of their name, so I knew what Melissa meant, but I have never looked up what Mel Marie meant. So when I looked it up, I was blown away. Like, it felt like the biggest wave of relief and also my soul being shaken alive different. And I'm gonna first share what Mel Marie means and then kind of tie this into what I hope to empower you with. So Mel means pharmaceutical honey. It is the purest form of honey. And then Marie means bitterness or rebellion. And when you put the two together, it's an embodied paradox. It's sweet and bitter, pharmaceutical rebellion. <laughs> it's this fullness and it's exactly what um, it tells the story of my mission and you know my mission is about holding both that it's okay to be imperfect and you know collapse into your mat with all these challenges and then be met with compassion and grace it's to learn that it's okay to have sad girl moments or challenging times and life is going to keep throwing them at you but you can also have peace you can also have sovereignty you can also have self-care so it's holding both and then you also look at this concept of rebellion. And they say that the most rebellious thing you can do is love yourself. And what's interesting is the yogis also talk about how we suffer because we have forgotten who we are. And if you look at how we have forgotten who we are, it's because we've abandoned our very nature. And the rebellion is the invitation to start to honor and listen and explore what is your nature, what's in alignment for you. And so an activity I want to leave you guys with is as you're sitting here, wherever, maybe you're holding a phone, whatever, wherever you are, I want to invite you to check in with your body. Just notice if you feel any tension anywhere in your body. So maybe it's in your neck. Maybe it's in your back. Just notice. So once you notice, I'm going to invite you to add some movement there. Like what would feel good? Maybe it's free neck movements. Maybe it's taking your hand there and just breathing into your hand. Maybe you need to rotate the wrist or just what movement does your body need? You don't need to have a, you know, a prescriptive sequence of the right yoga postures to do this. It's just listen, what do you need? Is there a stretch you need? Do you need to twist? Do you need to dance and shake it out? Check in, what do you need? The problem is, is we'll check in and we'll go, oh, I feel tight in my side, but what, let me Google, what is the right thing for my side? Versus just asking, oh, well, it might feel good if I just went like this, or let me just massage into it. So I invite you to reclaim 
your regulation. I invite you to reclaim how you make choice and navigate the discomforts that come up. Can you be curious with it? Can you build relationship with it and be collaborative? Can you negotiate the tension? We learn to do this on the mat and then it just pours into our life in a way where we can be in harmony, even if things are chaos around us. That we can have a bigger framework of knowing as we move through the crevices and the hallways of life's challenges. So I invite you, check in. Where do you feel tension? Is any free movement? And this is how you move yourself deeper into a life that you don't need to escape from.